Okay, so at the end of the last video, I just had quickly put in a border on top of the combination background that was made with a gradient that I painted and the compositing in of a found image of the, the wood grain. So I put that border in first by creating a, a vector shape and then rasterizing it so I could select the empty space around it. That gives me the cleanest edge. And then I filled that empty space with white. So what I have is what's called a floating border. And what's nice about that is you can add effects to it, right? So my floating border is just very subtle on my light background. And then just because of where my background had its black, there was a little bit of a black lip there. So because it's a floating edge, if I don't like that, I can move my background and I can still stretch it. I actually do like the little bit of a black lip there. But maybe I think it's too wide on the top. So what can I do? I can go to my composite layer, hit Control T, and then just stretch it up a little bit. And my border will not stretch. It's floating. So my border is fixed where I want it. But I can make it so just the tiniest bit yeah, of shadow exists there on the top and the bottom. And then I can do that on the sides too. I can squeeze it. So just the tiniest bit of shadow remains side to side, all underneath that floating white border. Now I want you all to have a border and traditionally, it is a white border because that helps with printing. Because when you print something on a printing press, even on an inkjet printer, you're not able to print all the way to the edge of the paper. And so you want to keep that in mind and actually design how much white space on the edges of your print you need. If you wanted your image to have printing all the way to the very edge of the physical image, you would then need to cut it out from the paper. And that's how professional printing works too. And that's called the bleed edge. So you can only um, fit ink so far into the paper because you don't want that ink to be then spreading onto the printing mechanism, you know, onto the rollers and onto the the chains and the ink heads and that just messes up every other print. So it's good to design in a border that you think looks good. And I'm going to ask you not to do a colored border unless you're thinking this was only ever for digital display. But you can decide whether to have a really thin border or a thick border, whatever makes sense. Um, let's see. That is now finished. You know, that's my finished poster if I'm happy with those decisions. But there are finishing techniques that might be interesting to you that I'll get into next. But before I, I deal with some of those extra things, I want to make sure to save this as a PSD, as my Assignment 8 poster. So there it is. So I'm updating it. And then in order to put it on the canvas, I want you to export it as a JPEG. And I'm going to keep the quality just at its default 70% because these are large files. So this is 2,700 pixels by 3,900 pixels, which means that it will print at a really high quality at the size of 9 inches by 13 inches. So I want you to, even if you're using browser-based like I am, to try to make this print quality at 300 pixels per inch at at least 9 by 12 inches, which is a good art standard. It's just a little bit bigger than, than 8 by 10. If we were in the lab, I'd require it to be at least 11 by 14 inches, but that's a little too much for, for browser base to be able to handle. Okay, so now we look at it and we see our illustration. We see the coloring. 
we see the background, we see the border all at full resolution, it's all gonna look good. And that's what we can put up to Canvas. So I will go ahead and do that, and then I'll show you some of the extra stuff that you might have fun with. So I will replace it with the newer one. So if I go into Canvas, this is what I had done so far, right? But none of these are things I require you to, to post. This is just showing the process. These three things that I'm putting in now <clears throat> are what are required by next class, because next class is our critique deadline, uh, to post. They are your black type solution, just clean black on a white background as a JPEG is fine. So we can see how you designed your type. If you traced it all yourself as a vector, if you modified an existing typeface, or like if me, if you modified an exi existing typeface and then augmented it with your own vector shapes. Next are the color variations of that black type. So this is where you can put in, oh no, <laughs> that's why I need to save it with a new name instead of replacing. But this is your, luckily be, I can go to my PSD and just turn everything else off. Save it again. This is your black type, right? So I'm going to export this as a JPEG. I need to change its name before I move it into my assignment 8 folder. That's why naming is important. Let me go ahead and open that up, crop it just around the color type. And it's okay if there's a lot of space around it. You'll see that in the past student examples. It depends on how you're arranging your type with your image. And then before I move it over, I need to change its name. So instead of it being the poster, this is the color type. And it's good to save these process steps, even though they're all contained in your PSD file. And now I can post that. And your color type is not just that the blacks are replaced by color, it's also any effects. So this has a drop shadow, this has an inner glow, this has a gradient, this has um, a slight texture, a slight emboss. And then lastly is your finished poster. And the basic elements required for it to get full credit is stylized type with an image. It can be your logo or your spot illustration with a background, with a border. But because it's a white border, on a white background here, it's just gonna look like there is no border. But when you put it into Imgur, as a final portfolio piece on a black background, you'll have that white background as a border. So I'll show you that quickly, why that border design matters. So if I take that same image, I wanna make it a little smaller so it all shows up. But if I take that same image and post it to the Imgur, I'll go ahead and open that up. So if you chose this as your final port, one of your five final portfolio pieces, I hope some of you will, and by the end of the semester, you put it into, into Imgur here, you don't need to put all your process steps, but it's helpful. And then if you add the image, like I've done here, the white will show up. Right, so it's important, just like it did in, in last semester's example.
And you can include your blocking sketches if you like, but all I need is black type, color type solution, finished poster. And if you want to include the sketch in with your color and black type, you can, but you don't need to. It just kind of depends on what your design is. I decided not to for this because including the sketch makes it so the type's pretty small. Just because it's fitting into a pretty small place on the actual poster. And I want to be able to we want to be able to show off, like you would in a portfolio, what your type design actually is. So that's all done. Now, we're going to learn a little bit about how type, or how everything is actually printed in, in the real world. Because this is the first project we've really made a point of making print ready, in terms of its resolution. That it's at least 300 pixels per inch. And we're thinking about the border and we're thinking about how it's going to look so one one major thing of printing is that we are not able to print with the millions of colors that we're able to see digital art on a screen so if we go to where we post you will see that i have a link to an exhaustive explanation of color separation and i show that here when they finish off their color type design for the Stranger Things, then they add what's called a halftone pattern to kind of finish it off. And I define what halftone is. Halftone is a technique, that's a technique that stimulates a gradient of shades with a limited number of tones, traditionally black and white. Although it was created as a result of limitations of print media, a halftone pattern effect can also be used on purpose to make the image more interesting. Not only to make it more interesting, but to actually speak to limitations of the printing process. So I don't need you to use that. I don't require it, but I want you to know about it. So that's why I have these slides. So when you print something professionally, it, you are limited to four inks on white paper. And those four inks are cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Sometimes it's called a four color process, but that's a little inaccurate because black ink is not a color. Black is not a color, white is not a color. So instead, it's a four ink process called CMYK. C stands for cyan, M stands for magenta, Y stands for yellow, and K stands for black. Why don't they use blue for black? Why isn't it CMYB? Well, because they don't want the, the B to be misinterpreted as blue, right? So it's CMYK for black. You can see CMYK in a few different ways. This is with traditional halftone dots. So as you layer on the dots of cyan ink, magenta ink, you can see magenta mixed with cyan. Yellow ink, you can see the yellow mixed with the magenta. Black ink, you can see the black mixed with the yellow, mixed with the yellow and the magenta, <laughs> right? You combine all of those and you can get what looks like full color printing. So all of these images are just created with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black dots. You can also use a customized shape instead of a dot. You can use, for instance, stars. I'm just turning the chat back on, so if you guys have questions there, I'll be able to answer them. Um, so this uses little star shapes. And any, any time that you're separating out the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black in an image, you are doing what's called color separating. Traditionally, it's done with dots, but any time you separate it out in any kind of shape, that is color separation. Here it is as a silk screen. So they are flooded screens, but with slightly transparent inks. And you can see that when you layer up the, the cyan with the yellow, you get green. If you layer up the magenta, the kind of hot pink, with the yellow, you get red. And when you layer up uh, all three together, you get what's called 100% black. But in actual printing, it's kind of a muddy uh, brown, like a dark brown, as opposed to a solid black, which is why we also need a black ink to really clean everything up. 
So 